Ladies and gentlemen, Sony has broken its silence on the PlayStation 5 with so many details now out in the open. We can dive deep into talking about what exactly is in the PlayStation 5, letting you know about how powerful it is in comparison to the Series X, as well as how much more powerful it is than the PS4. So be sure to get comfy and watch the entire video as you're going to learn something new. And do not worry, we're going to make this as entertaining as possible. PlayStation's presentation was pretty boring, unfortunately. And every game you're going to see in this video is a game coming to ps5 i want to know down below in the comment section are you team xbox or team playstation because i think you'll be very very surprised by this so i think the big thing straight off the gate is exactly how it differentiates itself from the series x and the ps4 so let's talk about specifications and comparing that to series x as well as most modern day gaming pcs because that's going to be the obvious comparison and we know that the ps5 is using a custom amd zen 2 cpu technology which we now know is clocked at 3.5 gigahertz I mentioned that this speed is the top end of the spectrum and there was also suggestions that this is the typical speed but under certain conditions it might run slower now for the gpu it has a grand total of 10.28 teraflops of power with 36 compute units running at 2.23 gigahertz now this is where it's going to be very interesting comparing it to the series x because the series x cpu has the exact same amount of cores being eight but they run at 3.8 gigahertz so it's a faster cpu compared to ps5 and when it comes to the gpu the playstation 5 has 10.28 teraflops of power with 36 computing units but the Xbox Series X has a grand total of 12 teraflops with 52 computing units. But by definition, the Xbox Series X is actually more powerful in terms of actual specs. The only difference is the PlayStation 5's GPU can run at a much higher clock speed of 2.23 gigahertz compared to 1.8. And that is incredibly surprising because in the last generation, the PS4 was obviously way more powerful than the Xbox One, but the Xbox One X is more powerful than the PS4 Pro. And now it seems Xbox have gone one step forward to making sure that the next Xbox is even better in terms of specs. There is way more to both consoles than just those specs alone to worry about, especially considering the PlayStation 5 has an incredibly fast solid state drive, which is in fact way quicker than the Xbox Series X's hard drive, which is nuts. And Sony have said that the SSD was the number one request and priority for them when building the PS5. So what can you expect with this inbuilt SSD? Well, it's 825 gigabytes in comparison to the Series X's one terabyte. But this is a new sort of platform for the SSD system rather than what the Xbox is having, where it's tailor built specifically for the PS5. Comparing how fast the PS4 hard drive is to the PS5, that can do 100 megabytes a second. But this can do speeds of 5.5 gigabits per second, which is incredible. Before performance rated at two orders of magnitude faster than ps4 for game creators they can go from trying to distract the player from how long fast travel is taking like spider-man subway rides to being so blindingly fast that they might even have to slow that transition down and to put that into perspective the series x can do 2.4 gigabits a second when it's raw data and 4.8 gigabits a second when it's compressed while the playstation can do 5.5 and it doesn't matter if the data is raw or compressed which is incredibly impressive but 825 gigabytes as your inbuilt hard drive might not be a lot of space for many of us many games are over 100 gigabytes so of course Sony allow you to use external storage and with the PlayStation 5 being backwards compatible you can save space by running your older games from your standard external storage so of course it won't be as fast as booting from the internal SSD but it will free up space for next-gen titles that are going to need it. But once the limit is hit on that inbuilt SSD, there is a way to boost the storage. And with Xbox Series X, if you fill that hard drive up, you can buy one of those other little memory card terabyte hard drives they're selling. But Sony are going to allow you to buy off-the-shelf parts and fit them into the console yourself. So at the moment, you can get some NVMe PC drives which have 7 gigabits a second speed, and that will work in PS5. But I'm sure as you're watching this video, you'll 
you're going, hang on a minute, how is the PS5 not as powerful as the Xbox Series X? Like, what is going on here with the CPU and GPU? But the approach they've made makes it incredibly friendly to developers to make games on the PS5 because it's so similar in architecture to the PS4 on that sort of developer level. And not only that, but the PS5 will have full backwards compatibility with PS4 games. So there will be 100 playable PS4 games on launch and then the library will grow so that means it won't have full backwards compatibility on day one but there will be a hundred playable ps4 games on day one and then they'll keep adding more until they have the entire library and looking at the ssd and how it's going to improve load times on even old ps4 games this is a leaked bit of footage to show the difference between loading on spider-man on ps4 and spider-man on ps5 and it is absolutely ridiculous when it comes to graphics we do indeed have hardware accelerated ray tracing via its intersection engine which is based on the same strategy as amd's upcoming gpus which will also feature ray tracing just like the xbox series x the ray tracing hardware is built into the shaders and it's so fully integrated which means you will get incredibly realistic reflections in puddles and light rays and shadows will look incredibly realistic and that includes stuff like reflections ambient occlusion shadows and global illumination and how far can they go with it well apparently there's already a playstation 5 title in development that is successfully using ray trace based reflections in complex animated scenes with modest costs to the performance and one of the biggest features in the ps5 which sets it apart from the xbox series x is unprecedented 3d audio fidelity truly delivering a next-gen audio experience. And what is crazy is Sony admitted to themselves that the audio department has been fairly poorly served across the current generation, typically getting a fraction of a Jaguar core to deliver 7.1 surround sound, which is far less than audio enjoyed in the PS3 era. And strangely, the PSVR was pointed out as a modern-day standard bearer of surround sound audio, as it features a bespoke audio unit capable of supporting 50 pretty decent sound sources but playstation 5 has a new audio engine called the tempest engine which supports hundreds of sound sources with a much higher quality in games today rain is a simple single sound but with this engine the ps5 aims to engender the feeling of actually being in the middle of a rain shower by simulating the sound of individual raindrops hitting the ground around you and another thing is about being able to precisely track where objects are located. And the science in delivering this is apparently astonishing, having to take into account the shape of your ears and even the size and shape of your head. So to precisely simulate accurate positioning, Sony needs to generate a table called the head related transfer function on a person per person basis. In short, the Tempest audio engine opens the door to a genuine revolution in game audio. And the one thing you don't need to worry about is buying into a high end audio hardware to enjoy the experience. In the short term, all you'll need is some headphones. All you need is two ears and two speakers. It's all you need and the engine will handle the rest. And going forward, Sony is optimistic about great results from virtual surround from TV speakers and soundbars with multi-speaker systems also due for support. Now the way this is going to work and tailor itself to your own hearing and your ears is the fact that the engine has about five presets available at launch. So it's going to take a while before this is going to be fully realized and be absolutely amazing for every single user. But there'll be a configuration tool which will ensure the best preset is best for you and it's going to be a journey that is going to take a few years for them to ultimately be able to capture everyone's perfect audio experience but it's very cool that they're taking a deep dive, enabling that next level of realism with audio for absolutely everyone. There's genuine desire here to propel gaming in new directions with the PS5, but at the same time retaining that ease of development that became a hallmark of the current generation and why so many more games were obviously more popular on PlayStation and made solely for PlayStation. And if the instant loading strategy pays off, they will have recaptured the immediacy of plug and play console gaming that has disappeared appeared so rapidly over the last couple of generations 
All we've seen today is a blueprint for a design that embraces both revolution and evolution. But aside from that, there is still so much that is being kept under wraps. Like with Sony's reveal earlier the week, Sony is still keeping a lot of things close to their chest. The only example of the SSD in action is wobbly cam footage of an early Marvel Spider-Man demo. But aside from that, we've not seen the actual physical console yet, nor have we seen the design of the controller. It's going to be very difficult difficult for Sony to demonstrate what exactly this audio engine is going to do without people actually getting their ears on to be able to experience this new engine so it's going to be very challenging and not only do we not know what the console looks like but we don't even know about its form factor like how big or small it's going to be in comparison to the Xbox Series X with the fact that it has a variable frequency to its processor with a power limit may suggest that this could be a more traditional console design as opposed to the radical solution that's been opted by the Xbox Series X. So with all that being said, we know a lot more about the PS5 than we used to, but clearly there's still a little way off the big, big reveal where we're going to see the actual console itself and the controller and actual gameplay. So it seems Xbox seem to be winning in this competition so far. They've shown a hell of a lot more than the PlayStation 5. So let me know what camp you sit in are you team xbox or are you team playstation let me know what you thought of this video down below if you enjoyed it feel free to leave a like rating subscribe for more and i'll catch you in the next one